Hello and welcome to the release video for LaTeX Indent version 3. I thought I'd put together a video just showing a few things about what LaTeX Indent can do just to hopefully bring the manual to life a little bit. So we'll get straight in with some demonstrations here. The first one that I thought we'd show is just a, a fairly simple environment based option. <clears throat> it's got a few environments here, begin one, begin two, begin three, begin four. And you'll notice that there's, there's kind of no assumption about which line the begin or end statement starts upon. Um, just by default, if you run LaTeX indent on this file, then the output is as follows. And you'll see here that <clears throat> the indentation has been appropriately done on each environment. Uh, the default is to add a tab although you can change that, which uh, I'm going to demonstrate on the next one. So you'll see that the first environment one has got a tab, and then environment two has actually got two tabs, environment three has got three tabs, environment four has got four tabs. The end statements have been accounted for. So if you want to change this, well, there are a number of different options that you can read about in the manual, but the next example shows just how if you show the default, change the default indentation, and what I've done here is used uh, the YAML interface. I've just used this tiny little YAML file just with default indent and I've set it to one space. If you run this file, environments nested forth, with change default indent.yaml, then you receive this output here. Notice that as before, one environment has received one space and the two environment has received two because it's nested and so on and so forth. The next example here, well, we're sticking with environments nested forth, but here we've uh, employed the no additional indent key, and we've employed it only for the one environment. So when we look at our original input here, um, we're expecting the one environment not to receive any input, any indent, but everything else to receive indentation. So the output is here, and notice that the one environment has not received any indentation, but all of the other ones have done. Of course, you can specify no additional indent for whatever name you like. Up next, well, we've started with again with the environments nested forth dot tech, and we've run it with these YAML settings here. And one of the things that is most exciting about LaTeX Indent version three is that it has the ability to modify line breaks. And in particular, um, when you run it with the M switch, all the details are given in the documentation. And let's say, for example, you use these YAML settings here. This says that for every environment that LaTeX indent finds, it should add a line break before a begin statement. And the body of every environment should start on its own line. The end should start on its own line. And the end should finish with a line break as well. These are examples of what I've called poly switches in the documentation. They're all off by default, but you can switch them on for code blocks or indeed per name as you see fit. So when we run this example with this YAML, we receive this output. You'll notice that the begin statements have been moved down onto their own lines. You'll notice that the body of each environment has been moved onto its own line if it wasn't already. And I suppose most obviously in this example, the end statements have also moved down each one to their own line. So LaTeX indent, of course, can also handle uh, command code blocks. So this is a very simple command. This one's actually taken exactly from the documentation. So if you go ahead and, and read that, you will see it there as well. So my command it has um, mandatory argument and it has one optional argument. The default output when you run this through LaTeX indent is as follows, like this. You'll notice that um, both the mandatory argument has received indentation and so has the optional argument. You'll also notice that there's no indentation on the so-called body of the command, the bit from after the name right up until the end of the last um, argument. That can be changed. Um, again, details are in, in the documentation. We're just going to explore a little bit of settings surrounding this example. So here again, this is this is uh, my command.tech and again, the YAML interface. Well, 
If we specify no additional indent in this so-called scalar form for my command, then running this file with these YAML settings gives us this output. So in scalar form, no additional indent applies to every part of the command. So it applies to the body, the mandatory argument, and the optional argument. There are options within that. So for example, here again is my command.tech. If we specify my command in this so-called field form, or you might say hash form, if you, if you prefer, with body, then that is going to only apply to the stuff following the name right up until the end of the arguments. So when we see the output, it's like this. Again, the body is the stuff from after the name all the way down to the final argument. Hopefully that will become a little clearer when we see this next setting. So <clears throat> this one, again in field form, where we've told it not to apply additional indent um, for the body. So we're hoping to see something a little different there. And then we're also going to see um, no additional indent on the optional arguments, but we're not going to see it for the mandatory argument. So the output is like this. Um, you'll notice here, in fact, the body switch has been ignored. And the reason for that is that actually by default, LaTeX indent has a global setting for, uh, for the command objects, which you can switch off as you see fit. Details are in the documentation. Notice in this particular example that the mandatory argument has received indentation because we didn't tell it not to here and no additional indent, but the optional argument has not received indentation. We can mess with this a little bit more. Here it is again. <clears throat> Here's another YAML setting. Notice that all we've done here is really just switch this zero to a one and this one to a zero and the output is given here. The mandatory argument has not received indentation, the optional argument has. Moving on, LaTeX indent can also handle code blocks involving key equals values or key equals brace values, I suppose I think of them. So this is just some ticks code. I've tested this on um, a number of test cases, um, both of my own making and also from the Tech Exchange. I think this one was taken from one of the Tech Exchange examples. So this is the uh, the input and the default output is given like this. You'll notice that it's accounted for the braces appropriately. And interestingly, um, this, this piece of indentation here, so the brace here, this is again called the body of the key equals value, um, key equals value code block. And this can be um, changed either on a per name basis or in fact globally, which I think I've got an example of coming up next. Yeah, again, same input. Here's the YAML. So you'll notice no additional indent global. I've set it to one for key equals value brackets and braces, which means that yeah, if you look at this, you'll see that um, the body has not received any additional indentation. So I'm looking at this kind of indentation here. Some other stuff that LaTeX indent can do. Well, it could do this previously, um, but it does it a lot more robustly in version three. It can align environments and indeed commands at the ampersands. So here's, here's the input, the default output is given here. You'll notice that the ampersands have all been aligned. And uh, most, one of the exciting features, not most excitingly, but one of the exciting features is that you can, speci you can specify kind of so-called special code blocks if you want to. So this is, um, this is a code block that starts with backslash and then uh, kind of a less than symbol and it runs to a backslash and then a greater than symbol. So you can tell LaTeX indent to process this as a special block. And the way that you do that is to specify it, whatever name you like in special begin end, you need to tell LaTeX indent to look for this and then you need to tell it what the beginning is. So backslash backslash just escapes the backslash and then less than and then it ends with backslash backslash greater than. So again, we're just escaping the backslash. You'll also notice in, in this YAML here, I've told it that in fact, within that special, I would, I've, I've put the name of that special CMH math into look for aligned delim. So not only is it gonna look for this pattern, it's actually gonna align at the delimiters here. Um, furthermore, I've actually put CMH math into, um, into modify line breaks. So I've told it that in fact, 
well, the beginning should start on its own line, as should the body, as should the end statement, and the end statement should actually finish with a line break as well. So in other words, what we're expecting to see is that, well, this, this body should be moved down one line, um, this end statement here should be moved down one line, everything should receive indentation, and on top of that, everything should be aligned at the ampersand. So the output is here, and there we go. So this is really just, I suppose, just a, a few examples that I hope are interesting. I hope that um, it's a useful tool. Um, if ever there is a, a situation where LaTeX indent does not work as you would like it to or as that you think it should, please do um, report it to me. Um, you'll find me on GitHub. You'll find the details of that in the documentation. And I'm also around on the Tech Exchange quite often. Thanks very much and um, I hope you enjoy it.